A lot of people have told me how lucky I must be to live in Colorado because I can get all of my overland supplies at any of the off-road or camping stores in town. However, what a lot of people don't know is that I actually get a lot of my stuff from big box locations. So if you have this store in your town, you might actually be able to pick this up yourself. <laughs> All right, first we're gonna go ahead and start off with this 12,000 pound winch from Badland. This is arguably one of the more popular items from Harbor Freight for the off-road community. This features a wireless remote, 80 foot of synthetic rope, and an oversized forged alloy steel hook. Having a winch is one of the most important things that you can have on your off-road rig. With 12,000 pounds, you'll pretty much be able to use this on any vehicle out there. With over 1,100 reviews out there with 99% of customers saying they would recommend it, I would say this is a really good buy. For a little bit less money, there's also the steel version of this, but it's actually a lot more heavy and it's a lot more susceptible to damage and rust. So I would say the synthetic is actually probably a better buy. All right, next we're gonna be looking at this soft shackle here. So this shackle is rated for 9,500 pounds. It is a 7 16th inch diameter rope, and that is equivalent to a 3 4th steel shackle. I find these to just be a little bit more convenient, and I really just like the idea of the soft shackle over the steel shackle. Now, if you really just wanna stick with the steel shackle, you can go for this 3 4th inch D-ring shackle, also from Badland. Shackles in general are really great to get you out of sticky situations. If you need to be pulled by the weight of the vehicle, it is a great point of contact between you and another vehicle if you're stuck in a position and need to be yanked out, or if you just need to be pulled out gently. Speaking of being yanked out, we actually have this 10,000 pound capacity recovery snatch strap. Now this strap is gonna be a little bit different. And if you have just like a rope and you're trying to yank yourself out of a bad situation, then that is gonna be a really dangerous maneuver. And if you go with a snatch strap, these are gonna be kinetic. So when you're yanking someone out, you're gonna have a little bit of give. So that way you're actually going to put yourself in a lot better situation. This is three inches thick and it is 30 feet in total. So that is a pretty good length for a lot of recoveries. Now something that I missed while I was in the store, but I thought about it and went and searched it down. There's also this 48 inch farm jack. Now, a lot of people will use this to recover their vehicle out of a bad situation, or they'll use it to change a tire on their lifted vehicle. If you have a lift and big tires in your vehicle, it's very likely that the stock jack will not work for your vehicle. These are really great because they can be used on your rock sliders, on your bumper, really anything that can take the weight of the vehicle. Then you can just pop this thing up change that tire out and then let it down fairly safely. This is gonna be the three inch LED floodlight from Road Shock. This is a pretty standard one that is gonna have only the lights facing forward. There's not gonna be any throw to the sides of the light. Even though this one's pretty cheap, it's only 19 bucks, I actually would rather go for the three inch LED floodlight with the side light. This one is four times the price, but in my opinion, it is gonna be a much, much better light. I personally know people that are running this and I know a lot more that have run this in the past. Ditch lights are a great first light to get for your vehicle. They're not super invasive and they really fill in the gaps where the headlights don't cover. These are a full 2120 lumens for only 84 bucks. If you were to go out there and buy, let's say a Baja or something like that, you're going to be looking at probably two, three hundred dollars for that many lumens. All right, next we're going to be looking at this rock light here. Now these are called rock lights because they are traditionally put in the wheel well and they will light up so that you can see your tire placement in dark situations or if you're gonna be wheeling at night. Not only can you place these in that position, but a lot of people will put these on their roof rack as sort of a scene light when they're at their camp or they're trying to see better while they're off-roading. All right, this next one is gonna be a portable jump starter that's also gonna be usable as an air compressor. Now, I personally wouldn't make this my main air compressor. I would get a dedicated air compressor for airing up and down your tires, but it is nice that it comes in packaged with the jump starter. 
The air compressor is going to be able to inflate tires up to 250 PSI. With this, you're going to get a jump starter, a 12 volt battery, a work light, and an air compressor. Now, I would say this is probably better as a jump starter and maybe a backup power supply and a backup work light as well as a backup air compressor. So we're also going to have this Viking 12 volt jump starter. This is going to peak out at 1700 amps but it will also be able to get your tire pressure up to 250. It's great for V8 engines and V6 diesel. It's got heavy duty clamps with a two rated AWG. That is the gauge of the cables. The way that works is the two gauge is gonna be a lot better for bigger engines. Whereas let's say a six gauge will be better for smaller ones. For a little bit more money, you might get something a little bit more suited for your vehicle than the last one. So this is gonna be the same as the last one. It's gonna be a multi-function unit. It is pretty large, so you better have a lot of space. Speaking of two gauge, this is gonna be a 20 foot super heavy duty jumper cable. Now, even though I keep a jump box around, I still like to have jumper cables just in case something goes wrong. If you want something a little bit cheaper, actually not that much less, you can get the 20 foot four gauge one. That's not gonna be as great for a V8 or a larger engine, larger battery than the other one, but you will save about 10 bucks. Personally, I'd rather just spend the extra money and get the better off one. This is gonna be a three ton floor jack and it's gonna be a lot better if you have a lifted vehicle. I have a three inch lift on my 4Runner and regular jacks really just don't do it. So I actually really like to use this when I'm working on my off-road vehicle. Now they do also have an off-road version for about twice the money. So if you're gonna be bringing this along with you on trails or while camping, then this might be the one to do. But if you're just gonna be doing it around the house, then I think the first one's perfectly fine. This one I couldn't really find in the store. It was, it was all bought up, but but I had this one on my vehicle for quite a long time. This is the Hallmaster two inch hitch mounted D-ring shackle. This is a nice point of recovery if you don't have a rear bumper because then you can just plug this into your hitch receiver that comes with the vehicle and be recovered that way. So the first one we're gonna talk about in the camping category is gonna be this parachute hammock with adjustable tree straps. Now this is very similar to my Eno hammock that I've had for going on 13, maybe even 14 years at this point. Now some people will, and I have in the past, use this as my actual tent. Basically you just wrap yourself up in your sleeping bag and hop on in and go to sleep. Now that worked great for me when I was a kid, but at this point in time, I just don't like to sleep in that position. But if you find that this is comfortable for you and you can sleep in it, then it's a really great and cheap way to camp. Now next up, we're gonna be looking at this 500 lumen headlamp. Now, I think that 500 lumens is actually kind of perfect for a headlamp. And one thing I really do like about this one specifically is that it is hand gesture activated. I've started seeing that a lot more in some of these headlamps and I really like the idea of that because that way, if you're doing something that involves getting your hands wet or dirty, you don't have to keep putting your hands on the button. You can just gesture your hands to turn it off and on. So for only being 20 bucks, this actually has a lot of features. So it's gonna have about a three hour, 40 minute runtime at that 500 lumen level. That's gonna be your highest one. Next, you're gonna have the spot low, which is gonna be 20 lumens. Then you're gonna have a high flood, a low flood, and then my favorite, the red light. All right, we're gonna look at a couple flashlights here. This is gonna be the Quantum 750 Lumen. This has an 1100 foot range, so you're really gonna get a lot of distance out of this one. With a 29 hour runtime, you're gonna get a lot of use out of this light. So this is gonna have three different modes, high, medium, and low. That high mode is gonna give you a 750 lumen output with about three hour runtime. The medium is gonna give you 385 lumens with a nine hour runtime. And low is gonna give you 120 lumens with a 29 hour runtime. Now this is gonna be battery powered and it's gonna have four AA batteries included with it. It has a steel body with a fiberglass reinforcement. So apparently when I was there, all the lights were sold out. So I'm gonna go ahead to their website to show you what they can have when they're fully stocked. First one we're gonna look at is a $9, 588 lumen tactical LED flashlight. That is quite a bit of lumens for only nine bucks. I actually kind of like this as a backup light to whatever flashlight you have as your main light. For only $9, it's worth it if you really never have to use it and just keep it as a backup. All right, so this next one is absolutely wild. 
1800 lumens is a ton of output and probably more than anyone here needs. I know I certainly don't need anywhere near that, but for only 30 bucks, if you do need that much output, then this is a good option. Now I know I just said you don't need 1800 lumens, but I'm really talking about directional light there. This is going to be a lot more of a soft light that's going to spread throughout your camp. Now 2000 lumens is still a lot of light, but as a lantern it's going to have a lot of spread so it won't be too bad. Alright, so getting back to it, we also have this work light here. It's 180 lumens and it rotates on an axis. I have these in the back of my Forerunner and I really like them. If you have a metal fridge, this is going to be really great because you can stick it on there. I have a molly panel in my back window. You stick right to it and light up the back area so that I can cook back there or just see when I'm using my drawer system. They're only five bucks and they put out enough light, so I would say this is a pretty good buy if you've got anywhere metallic that you want to put these. All right, so now we're going to be looking at knives. I really like these utility knives because they're usually pretty cheap and you can just change out the blades on them whenever it gets dull, so you always have a really sharp knife. You can usually operate these with one hand. They're pretty safe and they have a lot of uses. Now I wouldn't use this when I'm cooking or anything like that. If I had to cut down, let's say some rope, this might actually be a really good option. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about this 3.4 inch tactical folding knife. I have this exact same knife and I bought it for another video I did at Harbor Freight. I really like this one and I keep it in my center console because it does have a window break on the back of it. It's a pretty sharp knife, actually pretty well made. And I do like that it has the window break and the seatbelt cutter built in. Now another one I found online that I used to see in store, this Gordon 3.6 drop point pocket knife. Now I can't say from personal experience that this is a really great knife or anything like that, but just looking at the quality of it, the way it felt in my hand, it actually feels like a pretty well-constructed knife. It's only 10 bucks, might be worth it. All right, this next one is gonna be a foldable shovel. I've used these for years and years. They fold down really small and they're great for little tasks around the campsite. I've had mine for a long time and I still always bring it with me. It's really great for digging out the fire or if you need to dig any holes for any reason while you're out at camp. These are pretty much all the same and have been for many years. So I would say for 15 bucks, you're probably right in that same ballpark as anywhere else. All right, so next up, we are gonna be talking about this ax here. Now I keep this very same hatchet on the back of my vehicle on a molly panel. I've been pretty happy with it. It was only 10 bucks and I actually use this as a backup if I ever forget my actual ax, but it's a one and a quarter fiberglass ax. It does what it's supposed to do and that's pretty much all I can say about it. Now this next one, I've never personally owned myself, but it is a 3.5 pound fiberglass ax. It is the same manufacturer, it's pretty much the same thing, but just a little bit bigger and with some minor adjustments. It's got a poly handle that won't crack or weather. It feels pretty good in the hand while holding it, but I really couldn't tell you one way or the other unless I had personally used it to split or chop down wood. Now when it comes to axes, it's going to be four and a half pound, it's going to be made of hickory. Now this one is for those of you guys that like something a little bit more classic looking. I do like the aesthetic of this one over the fiberglass. Now I will say that personally I like the way that a wood axe chops and splits better than a fiberglass one. Either way this is a great one, it's just a very heavy axe. All right, next up is going to be a camping staple, and that is going to be this Hallmaster diamond braided rope. This is a 3 8 inch by 75 foot rope. It is not paracord. I could not find anything paracord there, but if you need some rope just for like tying down some guy lines or something like that, then pretty good deal there. All right, next up is going to be storage, and that is going to be starting off with this modular rolling toolbox here. Now, if you have a truck or an SUV and you just want a little bit of storage, you can easily roll this thing in the back of your vehicle and have a pretty good amount of storage in it. You don't necessarily have to get the $70 one with the wheels. It probably would work better actually if you just got one of the smaller ones, something to store in some camping supplies, just throw in the back of your vehicle and keep things very organized. So next up we have these Apache weatherproof cases. People use these for all different types of stuff. I've even seen these made into diesel heater boxes. 
I actually have a diesel heater built into a box just like this one. Although mine is a little bit better of a brand, you can reach out to Case Studies on Instagram and he can build you one of these. At the same time, you can use these to store, you know, weapons, something small, keep all your MREs in one location, or, you know, something small just to keep in a box and kind of keep it organized and out of the weather. There's also this 4800, which is the extra large version of this. It's a little bit bigger and can store a lot more stuff than the last one but you know there's a lot of different sizes of these you can kind of find out which one is the best one for you up next we have some heavy duty ratcheting tie downs now this is great if you have a truck and you have something heavy you want to kind of keep in place while you're driving it has a 3333 pound weight capacity on it it is two inches by 30 feet so you can really tie down some pretty heavy stuff and not have to worry about it sliding around. At the end of the day, I would recommend kind of keeping these with you at any point in time if you have a truck or if you have an SUV, this could also work for tying stuff down as long as you have points that actually tie into the vehicle itself. All right, next we're gonna be talking about crossbars. 150 pound capacity for $80 is a pretty good deal. Now you're not gonna be able to put a full on hard shell tent, a very heavy one on there, but 150 pounds should be able to carry a lighter rooftop tent or at least some storage boxes or kayak or anything that you would wanna bring while you're out there camping. These are pretty standard, they're not too fancy, but they'll pretty much do what you need. 54 inches across, pretty good size. If you have a truck, this 800 pound capacity roof rack would probably be a pretty good one. It actually has a track on there so you can kind of slide things in if you want to, which is a really good feature. Pretty tall, so whatever you put on there is gonna be way up in the air. Let's say you have like a clamshell rooftop tent, then you can have it overhang over top of your cab. Now those are typically gonna be a little bit longer, so you do want it to actually hang over your cab. So this actually would be probably pretty good. An 800 pound capacity is pretty good, so this might be a good one, but it's priced pretty similar to some other ones that are definitely proven. So I can't promise you this is gonna be the best rack you're ever gonna get, but it certainly will work. Now after that is gonna be some leather work gloves. Some people swear by the synthetic gloves, and if that's you, by all means, go ahead and grab you some synthetic, but I just like the comfort of a leather glove if I'm you know, working with cast iron or if I'm moving around rocks or picking up logs at camp. After that, we've got something that's gonna be a little bit controversial and I think kind of for good reason. This gas generator is one that I have and I even talked about this in a video. I kind of prefer these for home use just because they are loud and annoying, so if your power goes out at home, then who cares if the gas generator is running? However, if you are out in the middle of nowhere and you're not really gonna be annoying anybody and you keep it far enough away from your tent or your camper, then these really are a great option. So if you do have a solar generator or if you have like a battery system in your vehicle, then a 100 watt solar panel for only $179 is pretty great. This is a portable briefcase one, so you can pack it away and unfold it whenever you need it. I have a few solar panels ranging from about 110 watts up to 400 and something. And in general, I would say 100 watts is probably about the minimum I would bring with me. Next up is just gonna be some tarp. You never really know when you're gonna need it. You can use it for a base for your tent if you're a ground tent camper, or you can use it as a rain fly on top of your tent this is an 11 foot, four inch by 15 foot, six inch tarp. There's a bunch of different sizes and a bunch of different thicknesses, but I think this is probably the best one. There's a bunch of different sizes and thicknesses out there, but I really like this one because I feel like it's probably the most versatile. After that, we've got a magnesium fire starter. If you really want to be that kind of backcountry camper, then this is probably a good way to go. But I have something I think is a little bit better and I call it a lighter and I prefer that. But if you really want to be an overachiever, then go for this magnesium fire starter. Now, if you're going to be starting fires, obviously you want a way of stopping them, especially if you're out in the forest, you know, all those trees can light up quickly and a fire can really get out of control. So go ahead and get yourself a fire extinguisher. You know, it's only 25 bucks. And I would say this is pretty much a necessity if you're considering having a fire at camp. Now, I really like cleaning wipes while you're out at camp. It's a great way of cleaning your hands, cleaning anything that gets dirty, you know, chairs, tents, anything like that. It's only eight bucks and it's rated for auto, home, projects, and also for your hands. 
All right, so we're gonna start off the tools with duct tape. This is the Stick Tech brand, and I've used this before. I mean, it's duct tape, it, it works pretty much the same. This is 50 yards, it's silver, pretty much run of the mill, and it's only five bucks. They actually do carry the Gorilla Tape brand as well. I kind of prefer that one personally. It's almost twice the price, but I actually trust this one a little bit better. They claim it's about 2,000% stronger than ordinary duct tape. I tend to kind of believe that. Now next up is something that I actually have in my vehicle personally. I really like this as sort of a backup or for emergencies. It is an SAE and metric universal grip wrench. Now another one that I actually do have and I use is this hex key kit. They're really compact and they sort of open like a Swiss army knife. Really nice to store if you have anything that needs it. Now I've never really needed these while I'm out camping for my rack or for any of my accessories, but just in case I do keep these because a lot of my accessories actually do use hex keys. So if you just wanted a basic kit to bring with you while camping, then this 130 piece tool set would be a good one to buy. It's gonna have pretty much most of the stuff you would need while you're out there camping. You know, maybe you can add some stuff if you want, and maybe some of this stuff is a little overkill, but I like to have a tool set while I'm out there camping. And this covers pretty much most of the bases. After that, we've got a measuring tape. I mean, there's always things that you can measure while you're out there. You know, you need to know the distance between two trees to see if your, you know, hammock or something fits. Then, you know, I just like to keep these in the back of my vehicle for really any use. Now this is not an absolute necessity, but if you need to work on your vehicle and you have a lot of tools, this would be a really great one. Now I'm always joking that Harbor Freight should sponsor me because I've made two videos on them so far. So if you're listening out there, Harbor Freight, this is what I want for Christmas. But if you do a lot of your own wrenching on your vehicle, then this would be a really great purchase.